Hi, I'm Jim Hutspeth with Reed Electric and this is Caleb Bishop. We're going to talk about winding, bearing, and temperature devices for protection. This board is illustrating different types of RTDs or thermocouples, thermal protectors. And what I'd like to just go into briefly is this is a 100 ohm platinum isolated or insulated bearing probe. At this point right here, you can see there's an insulation that's in between the tip of the probe and the arm. So that if we place an ohmmeter across from the tip to there, there's no continuity. And that allows us to put that RTD in an application where there's a shaft current involved and it doesn't allow any path to be made between the bearing and the actual connection head. Okay. So Jim, what happens when you use a standard probe rather than in an isolated probe spot? Okay, so this probe is basically designed so that we don't have any continuity from right here past this section you can see right here. Actually, when this thing is built, what they've done is they've expanded, they've cut the tube, expanded the mouth so it opens up, and then they've insulated this portion, stuck it back in, and then crimped it so that there's no continuity right there. Okay? So if we have a bearing housing that's insulated with a normal bearing in the housing and the probe touches the bearing, with this probe there's no path for any current flow or voltage to pass through. If we now install a standard probe so it looks just like this portion of the probe touching the bearing, you've made a path from the outer shell of the bearing where it can now flow through this, go right to the winding head, I'm sorry, the RTD head, and then it can pass through the conduit or the connection points to the frame and make a loop back to the bearing. So we can have a current flow from where there wasn't one and induce it to now where there is one. So when a customer has a RTD failure and he replaces it, a lot of times they don't realize that the RTD itself is an insulated probe. When they install a standard probe in its place, they make a path for shaft currents or fluting to start occurring. The path can go right through the RTD to the RTD head where it's mounted to the framework and start a current loop back through the motor, through the RTD, and back through the motor. This is a winding RTD. It's the same device, but this is actually inserted into the slots on the stator core. Okay. It's a 100 ohm platinum as well. We'll end up putting six of these in the phases. Um, what type of material is this right here? That's a G10 phenolic and it's a 100 ohm wom platinum RTD inside. Okay. This one right here is a 100 ohm platinum. And again, this is more of a flexi flexible silicone type heater material, but it's actual RTD. You can see that this looks the same, but this is an actual space heater. Okay. This is a 100 ohm RTD. And you can tell by the three wires versus the two wires in this case. RTDs come with a variety of different type of wires. Some come with a three conductor, one red, two whites. The two white wires are actually connected together so that if you've got a, like a 500 foot run, you can actually take the wire, measure the resistance across the two whites, and then use that resistance reading in your calculation at the controller so the temperature is very accurate. So it's actually like calibrating. <laughs> Let me go back on the space heaters for a second. Again, like I was saying, Caleb, this looks identical to this. We energize this with voltage. This gets hot. This is a waning condensation heater, so it keeps the wanings from having any condensation form inside when the motor's turned off. It has nothing to do with this one. I put this up here just so that it would give you an idea that they look alike, but they are not the same. Okay. okay? And with the RTDs, like in this case, you can see there's three wires here and there's only two wires here. There is some two wire. So you may see a white and a red together. And again, it, it is most like an RTD if you see the white and red, but this is not. This is just for illustration purpose only. Okay. This is a small tip sensitive probe. It's designed so you can actually put it into a bearing cap or any location that you wanna actually screw it into and tighten down and this spring allows it to move up and down in the head. So it'll slide this way. Okay. And it's the same kind of configuration with the three wires. 
This is an, a device that's a thermal protector. The thermal protector is nothing but a bimetal strip that has two contacts internal. And as the strip gets hot, the two contacts will either pull apart if it's normally closed. If it's normally open, it'll, it'll uh, come together and short. Okay. And they use those for devices like on a alarm system. They may want to have the system alarm them before shutdown so they have time to clean out the machine of its product okay. so they don't get into bigger problems. So normally open could be for an alarm. Normally closed normally is in circuit with the contactor coil of the, the starter. Mm -hmm. So if it heats up, it just drops the voltage going through the coil that holds the contactor in the circuit, mm -hmm. opens the circuit and allows it to shut down the unit. After it's cooled down, <coughs> the contacts will reset and then you can restart the motor again. Okay. Generally, you want to make sure that there's not a problem that's causing this to happen. So one time might be just temperature related in the building with the ambient temperature. Mm -hmm. If it's doing it more than once or twice, the customer needs to go back out there and try to figure out what's causing his problems. Does he have a higher current rating on the motor because the load's changed? Is the unit getting hot? It could be a bad thermal protector. Correct. Okay. Correct.